how different did you have to call the game knowing Harry Trotter wasn't going to be there at running back? Well, thankfully, we're, our ability to pass pro and stuff, we, we, we did a pretty good job early. So I, I didn't feel um, – quite as uh, concerned as I maybe would have, because I really feel Harry understands what we're doing protection-wise and does a great job with that. Um, and, and, you know, early in the game, obviously, it took a while to get things rolling at all. Um, you know, I think we only had six plays in the first quarter. So um, I, I, I don't know if I had even a good feel where, where and how it was going to go. They were doing a good job kind of keeping the ball. Thankfully, we got some turnovers and kept them from scoring each time. Um, but, but not having Harry was a concern early and then I felt like once we were kind of picking things up and weren't getting the quarterback hit a bunch I felt pretty good that we'd be all right I guess it's uh you could look at it both ways you had 150 plus receiving yards from running backs last week but then the receptions from the receivers wasn't there what will it take this week to get that group going a little bit more well I I think we just got to keep taking what people give us and and you know, we got to keep guys understanding that it doesn't matter how we move the ball. We just need to move the ball. When you get opportunity to make a big play, you got to make that big play. Um, I felt like we made a number of plays this week, hadn't the week before, but we still left some out on the field. I mean, we, we had opportunity to make two or three more plays um, that, that could have made the, uh, our, our lives a little easier, that's for sure. And last one for me, did, did the way that second half get, went, did that show you that you guys have a little bit more quick strike capabilities than you previously knew about? Uh, well, I just felt like we, we, we made some plays and didn't get tackled one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Cause again, I, I kind of go back to Arkansas state a little bit on that and say there was probably five post plays that if we complete two or three of them, you feel like, man, this, this team can, can move the ball in, in chunks by throwing it down the field. And unfortunately we didn't make those plays. That's, Hey, Coach, good to see you. Um, can you discuss the progress the offensive line showed during that game and, and how much they came along from first quarter to fourth quarter? Well, twofold. Uh, from the first quarter to the fourth quarter, our ability to start at least plugging away from a run game standpoint, giving ourselves a chance. Um, you know, the, the, the last touchdown, yeah, he, it was a nice run, but it was also blocked well. Um, and – the, the, probably the bigger difference as far as more from one game to the next was our ability to, to take hits off the quarterback. Um, you know, we only gave up one sack. And, and to be honest with you, I felt like he probably got hit more in game one than he did, uh, I'm talking when he still got the throw off, than he did against OU. And, and that's, that's going to be a huge deal for us is not just progressing from a run game standpoint, but those five guys also got a pass pro and do a great job passing things off and, and giving us opportunity to throw it. Um, if we're not running the ball as well as we want to. And as a play caller, when the offensive line starts to click, how much does that open up your possibilities of what you can dial up? Well, it changes a bunch, just our ability to use play action pass. Um, you know, if you're running the ball uh, and getting some, some four, five, eight, 12 yard run plays, and now we can start running some play action and, and be able to throw it off that. And um, I felt like our ability to run the ball did help us. Now you'd say, well, you didn't run it that well. No, we didn't, but it still allowed us to use some different protections that kept, kept the quarterback clean. Thank you. John? Yeah, Courtney, the fact that you guys have had so many more explosive plays this year, is it as simple as, hey, we've added Deuce Vaughn to the mix here? Or why do you think you guys have been able to create more explosive plays? No, I well, I think Deuce is obviously something that that's – been great for us and he's done a, a phenomenal job to this point and, and but I also think it's you know Skyler delivering a ball where you can catch it and run with it um, I think it's guys downfield making blocks um, you know uh, it, it's it's the whole offense to understanding that yeah one guy has to make sure he doesn't get tackled one-on-one -on -one, but everybody else has got to play and play to the end uh, you know uh, one of uh, one of his long receptions, uh, Deuces. That Riley Moore does a phenomenal job of of blocking downfield and cleaning a guy up that probably tackles him if we don't put the extra effort in to, to block downfield and allow him then to go get you know 20 more yards. So uh, all of us got to keep understanding that you never know when your extra effort is going to be the difference. How much different does it feel as a play caller this year with? Having Briley Moore at tight end, Deuce Vaughn, obviously the, the guys that you have out wide, just seems like you have a lot more options as far as guys to go to offensively. 
Yeah, I don't know that I feel much different, honestly. I mean, I felt like last year uh, uh, we still had guys that made plays. Uh, uh, were we as consistent as we need to be? Well, we've not proven yet this year that we'll be consistent. Uh, we need to be, uh, and, and we hope we can build on what we were able to do this past week. Uh, we need to build on it. So um, I, I think there's still a lot of room to get better, and, and our mindset needs to be that every day I, I can improve and need to improve. Appreciate it. Kels? Uh, what kind has caught your eye about Texas Tech and their defense already? Well, in the back end, they're going to they're gonna try to really knife you down and tackle and be physical. Um, you know, they, they're not uh, – they're not a boxy in and 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 match you type of team. They're going to come in and try to try to uh, tackle everything low. Um, they try to use their team speed and play fast. And and their their interior three guys are bigger, thicker guys, but their back end guys all are long, rangy guys that can really run. And uh, I'm not saying they have a mindset of let's figure out how to get off the field uh, one way or the other, but their mindset is fly around fast and make things happen fast. And I'm sure that from a, a, a program standpoint, they want the ball back in their offense's hands so they can, they can get 90 to 100 snaps in if they can. And we've got to do a good job forcing their defense to stay out on the field and play eight, nine, 10 play drives and, and make, them, make them defend us uh, and not just be where we're sitting on the sideline and their offense is, is doing things. Got time for these last two hands. We'll start out with Arnie. You're muted. Got it. Um, I know Chris talked about uh, the running back by committee and uh, and song, but also with the offensive line with COVID. Do you feel like you have to work more people in than you normally would, even if it's not dictated by the the current situation? Just hundred percent the possibility. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. I feel that, and and you know the biggest. Examples I would use is the, the, the our game last week and when you watch Texas Texas Tech game last week, I felt like we were as, as fresh and ready to go as you could be in the fourth quarter, even though it was in the fourth quarter. And I felt like that uh, uh, when you watch the game, um, we were we were in better shape. We were we were and it wasn't because each individual is probably in better shape, but we, we use as many people as we can. Uh, when you watch the Texas Texas Tech game, by the fourth quarter and overtime, you could see they were two teams that were gassed. They were spent, um, and and we want to make sure we've got as much left in the tank when we get to the fourth quarter as we can have. Last one right here, Fitz. Yeah, building off of that, Coach, um, how conscious of you are you of trying not to get sucked into the shootout mentality that Texas Tech tends to do to opponents? They certainly did it to Texas, and and being conscious of possessing the ball and kind of taking the air out of the game. Yeah, uh, you know, we obviously want big plays and we want to score. And if we score in one or two or three play drive, I'm I'm excited and happy about that. But we as a program and team offensively understand that. Uh, the ability to stay on the field and have eight and 10 and 12 play drives and, and start kind of uh, grinding on people is a huge positive. And, and just as an example, uh, only getting six plays on the, in the first quarter was, was hard on our offense because you couldn't, you know, somebody asked you, well, what'd you feel like you could run? Would you, I, shoot, I had uh, four plays that were on a quote, normal down and distance and two third down plays. And I couldn't have told you what we felt like we could run. And, and that's what we need to be able to do to a Texas Tech style of offense is keep them on the, on the bench. And if we get a three and out as a defense, then we go back out and hold the ball for five, five minutes. That's, that's a huge bonus for our program. And following up on that offensive line, uh, does the youth and inexperience of this line make those prolonged drives a little bit more challenging? Uh, obviously, the, their ability to communicate and work together is a huge part of our, our ability to move the chains. But if it's the, uh, a wide receiver making a 10-yard gain to, to move the chains and, and picking up the O-line when maybe we don't do it as well as we need to, that's, that's what we've got to do. And that's, that's all 11 of us figuring out how to move the chains.